everyone. This is Justin with the Tipsy Garden. Got my wine in hand. Today we're going to teach you how to do a shade planter. Um, so what I first start with is when you go to the nursery you want to look for your plants that you want to select. Any color scheme will do. It's up to your personal preference. We today selected some New Guinean Impatience. These are great for part sun. Um, really tough, hardy annual. We also decided to choose for our centerpiece a uh, Color Blaze Wicked Witch Coleus by Proven Winners. And then I always like to add some Dusty Miller. This is a great one for sun and shade. Um, it's just nice foliar accent. It's light, it's airy, really pretty stuff. And it really brings out the darker foliage when you pair it with something light like that. This one here is a Rainbow Ascot Euphorbia. Um, in some zones, that's a perennial, but here it's only an annual in Colorado, zone 5B. And then we're going to do, for our spiller, we're going to do a little vinca vine. And these will get little uh, periwinkle blue blooms on them as the season progresses as well. So we'll have a nice blue and pink, um, just soft color palette. So, what you want to do to get your pot ready is, if you don't already have it hooked up to a drip system, Get your drip tubing and set that up. You can usually tap into a mainline sprinkler um, and we'll do a more in-depth video on how to do that in the future. Um, for this one in general, we're just going to hand water this because it's close to a water access and it won't be a hassle to do that and keep up on it. You want to keep in mind with your shade plants, you don't have to water those as frequently because they're going to lose less moisture because they're not in the hot daylight sun of the afternoon. Gonna get going here and then we will take a look at the end at our final result and give you a little view of that. So these guys have a nice sturdy root system. One of these plugs will turn into a massive plant so if you want to spread these out throughout the arrangement feel free to do that too. So, and you can use a trowel or you can just use your hands whatever you want to do. It's not rocket science. You do want to tamp that plant in there really good and sturdy. Make sure that the roots are totally packed in there. If it looks a little rough, it's because it is, and it's important to do that because that helps your plant get a good start. Now we want to get some good growth on these plants as well. So one of the cool tips that I have for you as far as if you're planting a planter this late in the season, which it's not too late to plant things, um, you want to get, this is called Bonide Root Stimulator or Rooting Powder. And what I do is I use about two capfuls for a container about this size, which this container is about mm, probably about a two gallon container. And you just fill that top of that lid up, sprinkle that throughout the system, and then work it in with your fingers. You also want to add in a slow release fertilizer because you want your plants to have food. And so the directions for that are on the back of the bag there. I just eyeball it because I've done it for so long that I usually can guesswork it pretty good. Um, but I would say for a container about this size, you want to do about two cups full of slow release fertilizer. And that is heat activated. So in this hot summer months that we're coming up on with June and July and all your backyard barbecues and stuff coming up, you're going to have a nice looking com uh, container in no time. So we're just going to keep popping stuff in here as we go. You could have your music going for some nice background music while you're doing this. Get your groove going, have some wine. You get a plant that looks like that it's been in its can for a long time tickle the roots it's okay to tease your roots a little bit it helps them get acclimated it looks a little aggressive but they appreciate it plants are kind of little masochists they like a little hurt here and there <laughs> so we're just gonna pop him in there Firm it in really good so there's no air pockets. If you get air pockets, 
around your roots that can um, sometimes cause root rot and other issues or it invites bugs to come down there and eat those nice little tender roots because there's access to it so you just want to tickle that root system Doo -doo 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 -doo. and then we're just gonna set him right in here next to the other guy there we go tamp it in there good make sure you feel all the way around the base of the plant that there's no air pockets there's no loose soil and then we're gonna do the same thing with this guy gosh these are all really nicely rooted kudos to the nursery when we went to I can't remember the name of it but we'll post the link up there we're in Ca Castle Rock today helping out a friend she's got a beautiful property as you can see Plum Creek Nursery mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> and that's right off the highway off of I-25 there um, near Castle Rock so kudos to them thanks for providing us awesome plant material to work with we appreciate you we're gonna pop this last couple guys out and then once you get all this planted in you want to firmly um, pack down your soil one more time make sure everything's nice and settled and then we're gonna get a watering can and water these bad boys in and enjoy watching them grow um, other than that, I hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. We'll get a like nice shot for our Instagram here to share with you guys of what our end result looks like. And then we'll have our lovely assistant Amber come pan down here and get a look at the planting up close too so you can see. And when you're picking colors and plants and things, you want to pick things that like about the same amount of water. Um, usually with your annuals, they're all pretty compatible as far as the water needs go. Some of them are going to be thirstier than others. If it has a really small leaf to it, those are things that are going to want more water. Things that have bigger leaves, in my experience, usually they're better at retaining their moisture. So that's why I tried to get stuff that all has nice, sizable leaves to it. We kind of have a little empty spot here, so we're just going to pop this last guy in here. Snug them in there, tuck them in so that they can sleep and enjoy life together there. Awesome. We're rocking. And then if you want to give them a quick look close up there, lots of nice, really bold colors, lots of fun contrast. And that is your end result there. This has been... Justin with the Tipsy Garden. Enjoy your wine, enjoy your gardens. <laughs>